How did the house of Tudor originate? The name of a royal family that ruled England for well over a century, from 1485 to 1603, came from a Welshman. Owen Tudor, who sometime after 1422 married Catherine of Valois, 1401-1437, the widow of Henry V. Who ruled from 1413 to 1422. The family did not come to power until Henry VII ascended the throne. Ruling from 1485 until his death in 1509, Henry VII, 1457-1509, ended the bitter. Thirty-year War of the Roses during which two noble families The Houses of Lancaster and York, had struggled against each other for control of the throne. The conflict earned its name since the badge of each house depicted a rose, one red and the other white. In taking power, Henry VII became the head of the House of Lancaster and in 1486 he married into the House of York. Thus uniting the two former enemies and founding his own Tudor dynasty. He's known as Henry Tudor. What were the international contributions to the War on Terror? According to the U.S. Central Command, by early 2005 there were 70 nations supporting the global war on terror. And 21 nations had deployed more than 16,000 troops to the U.S. led operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. Coalition forces contributed in a variety of ways, including providing intelligence, personnel, Security assistance, equipment, and other assets for use in ground, air, and sea operations. Coalition members also provided humanitarian aid to civilians. Who were the Habsburgs? The Habsburgs were Europe's most powerful royal family. Even if one chose to argue the point of power, there can be no arguing the longevity of the House of Habsburg. They supplied Europe with a nearly uninterrupted stream of rulers for more than 600 years. Also spelled Habsburg, which is closer to the pronunciation, Habsburg, the name came from the castle of Habichtsburg, meaning Hawk's Castle, built during the early 11th century in Switzerland. The first member of the family to bear the name was Count Werner I, who died in 1096. It was Werner's descendant, Rudolf I, 1218-1291. Who was elected King of Germany and the Holy Roman Empire in 1273, when Rudolf conquered Austria three years later? He established that country as the family's new home. Austria, Bohemia, Germany, Hungary, and Spain were among the European states ruled by the House of Habsburg. With only one exception, the Habsburg family also ruled the Holy Roman Empire from 1438, when Albert II was elected. Until 1806. It was the reign of Emperor Charles V. During the 16th century that the Habsburg influence reached its high-water mark. 
when in 1496 Spain's Philip I, called Philip the Handsome, 1478 to 1506, married Joan of Castile. 1479 to 1555, it assured that their son Charles V, 1500 to 1558, would inherit the crown of Spain, which he did in 1516. Charles was grandson to Spain's King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. He also inherited the rest of what by then was a vast empire, and he ruled as Holy Roman Emperor from 1519 until 1556. Charles V is considered the greatest of all the Habsburgs. Though he did face problems. Chief among these were the Protestant Reformation, opposition from his lifelong rival, Francis I. 1494-1547, King of France, and the Ottoman Turks, who were at the height of their power during his reign. Nevertheless, he was a successful ruler and his accomplishments included Spain's conquest of lands in the New World Mexico. At the hands of Hernán Cortés, 1485-1547, and Peru, by Francisco Pizarro. C. 1475-1541. In 1867 the Habsburg Empire was reorganized as the Austro-Hungarian Monarchy. That monarchy was dissolved in 1918, after World War I. With the Treaty of Versailles establishing new boundaries for the successor states. When did the major combat phase of Operation Iraqi Freedom end? President George W. Bush, 1946, declared an end to major combat on May 1, 2003. But the stabilization of Iraq was far from over. The fighting continued more than two years later, the result of an increasingly violent Iraqi insurgency. Faced with the ongoing resistance, in December 2004 the number of U.S. troops in the war-torn nation was increased from 130,000 to 150,000. Most of the casualties occurred after the declared end of major combat. On April 8, 2005, the Pentagon reported that there had been 1,543 American fatalities in the war to date 1,174 in hostile actions and 369 in non-hostile actions, including accidents during routine maneuvers. Of the 1,543 U.S. military deaths, 1,404 died after the declared end of major combat, 1,065 of them from hostile action. More than 7,000 had been injured to date. In addition to the American fatalities, the British military had reported 86 deaths as of early April 2005, Italy. 21, Ukraine. 18, Poland, 17, Spain, 11, Bulgaria, 8, Slovakia, 3, Estonia, Thailand, and the Netherlands, 2 each, and Denmark, El Salvador, Hungary, Kazakhstan, and Latvia, 1 each. The figures fueled criticism for the lingering war with some observers wondering if stabilization was possible in the fractious nation. There were several factors contributing to the growing lists of casualties and injuries. 
coalition forces were frequently ambushed in attacks from resistance fighters and suicide bombers. U.S. troops faced continued combat in parts of Baghdad and its outskirts. The southern towns of Najaf and Kufa were holdouts of resistance, and there was intense fighting in the Sunni cities of Fallujah. Ramadi, and Samara, which remained under insurgent control even after the transfer of political authority from the United States to the interim Iraqi authority on June 28, 2004. What was the Doomsday Book? It is an important document surviving from the reign of England's William I, c. 1028 1087, a Norman who had conquered England in 1066 to become king. He ordered the survey so that he could have a complete record of England's lands, property owners, and resources. He used this information to his advantage, even taking possession of some properties thereafter. The census is considered an excellent record of Europe's Middle Ages, 500-1350. Why did NATO respond to the 9-11th attacks? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, responded to the terrorist attacks on the United States. Because its charter states that an attack on any member nation is considered an attack on the alliance. The language is contained in Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, signed April 4, 1949, in Washington, D.C. The parties agree that an armed attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all and consequently they agree that if such an armed attack occurs, each of them in exercise of the right of individual or collective self-defense will assist the party or parties so attacked. It was the first time Article 5 had been invoked by NATO since its founding. On September 12, 2001, NATO convened a special meeting in response to the attacks on American soil and afterward issued a statement saying, in part, that the United States could rely on the support and assistance of NATO if it was found that the attack was directed from abroad. The organization's Secretary General, Lord Robertson, 1946, strongly condemned the attacks and called for the international community and the members of the alliance to unite their forces in fighting the scourge of terrorism. The invocation of Article 5 was confirmed by NATO on October 2, after U.S. Ambassador-at-Large Frank Taylor briefed the organization's chief decision-making body on the investigations into the terrorist attacks. The North Atlantic Council determined that the information provided by Taylor confirmed that that the individuals who carried out the attacks belonged to the worldwide terrorist network of Al-Qaeda. Headed by Osama bin Laden and protected by the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. At a press conference held October 8, Secretary General Lord Robertson announced NATO's full support for the U.S.-led invasion of Afghanistan. The following day it was confirmed that NATO 
assets had been deployed to the eastern Mediterranean to establish a presence in the region. But the alliance did not take a lead role in the military effort to oust the Taliban from Afghanistan. Who were the Romanovs? The Romanov family ruled Russia from 1613 until 1917, when Nicholas II. 1868 to 1918, was overthrown by the Russian Revolution, 1905 to 17. The dynasty was established by Michael Romanov, grandnephew to Ivan the Terrible. Who ruled from 1533 to 1584. There were 18 Romanov rulers, including the much-studied Peter the Great. Who ruled from 1682 to 1725, and Catherine the Great, who ruled from 1762 to 1796. As the last Tsar of Russia. Nicholas II, who ruled from 1894 to 1917, likely suffered not only the recrimination that was due him. But the public hostility that had accumulated over centuries of ruthless Romanov leadership. Nicholas's difficulties came to a head when he got Russia involved in World War I, 1914 to 18, which produced serious hardships for the Russian people and for which there was little public support. Once Tsar Nicholas was overthrown, and later killed, in the Russian Revolution. 1905-17, Bolshevik leader Vladimir Lenin, 1870-1924, set about extracting Russia from the conflict by agreeing to sever concessions to Germany. Oddly enough, the Romanov family had, in the 14th century, originated with a German nobleman, Andrew Kabyla, who had emigrated to Russia. What was the Bay of Pigs? Bay of Pigs is the name of an unsuccessful 1961 invasion of Cuba, which was backed by the U.S. government. About 1,500 Cuban expatriates living in the United States had been supplied with arms and trained by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. On April 17, 1961, the group of men who opposed the regime of Cuba's Fidel Castro. 1926, landed at the Bahia de Coquinos, Bay of Pigs, in west-central Cuba. Most of the rebels were captured by the Cuban forces, others were killed. In order to secure the release of the more than 1,100 men who had been captured during the invasion, Private donors in the United States accumulated $53 million in food and medicine, which was given to Castro's government in exchange for the rebels' release. The failed invasion came as a terrible embarrassment to the Kennedy administration. And many believe the Bay of Pigs incident directly led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. What happened in the anthrax scare of 2001? The anthrax scare unfolded shortly after the September 11, 2001. Terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. 
when news first broke that anthrax-laced letters were received at East. Coast media outlets and U.S. congressional offices There were fears that the spreading of the infectious bacterium was linked to the 9-11 attacks. But the investigation later pointed toward a domestic perpetrator, still unknown in mid-2005. According to a report from the Office of Homeland Security, the anthrax events began on October 2, 2001, when an infectious disease doctor in Palm Beach County, Florida, reported a suspected case of inhalation anthrax. That diagnosis was confirmed by the Centers for Disease Control, CDC. On October 4 and the information was released to the public, rattling the nerves of an already jittery nation. On October 5 the first victim of the anthrax attacks. The 63-year-old South Florida man who had been hospitalized, died. On October 7 investigators announced that evidence of the anthrax bacterium was found in his workplace. The Florida Offices of American Media Inc. AMI, publisher of the National Enquirer, Sun, and other tabloids. On October 12 New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani announced that an NBC News employee in the office of Anchorman Tom Brokaw had tested positive for cutaneous, skin, anthrax, a less dangerous form of the bacterium. Three days later, it was reported that a letter containing suspicious powder was opened in the office of Senator Tom Dashley, South Dakota, in the Hart Senate Office Building in Washington, D.C. The next day the powder tested positive for anthrax. October 16 brought the news that the infant son of an ABC News producer in New York City had tested positive for exposure to the skin form of anthrax. The baby had visited the ABC News offices weeks earlier, and officials believed exposure had occurred at that time. The same day, it was announced that a second AMI worker, a 73-year-old mailroom employee, was diagnosed with inhalation anthrax and was in intensive care. The announcements brought the number of confirmed anthrax cases to four, two inhalation and two cutaneous. Within days CDC officials had linked all four cases to the intentional delivery of B. Anthracis spores through mailed letters or packages. The FBI urged the public to handle any suspicious packages with care. To not open, smell, or taste them, and to call 911 immediately. On October 18 the worker at CBS News in New York was reported to have been infected with skin anthrax. The next day the public learned that an editorial assistant in the Manhattan offices of the New York Post had also been diagnosed with the skin form of the disease. Also on October 18 and 19 the CDC confirmed diagnoses of both inhalation and cutaneous. Anthrax in New Jersey postal workers, who had begun showing symptoms of infection on October 13. Between October 19 and 22 four workers from a Washington, D.C. Postal facility were confirmed to have been infected with inhalation anthrax and were hospitalized. On October 22, two of them died. Two days later the U.S. Postmaster General announced to the public. There are no guarantees that the mail is safe and he advised hand-washing after handling the mail. 
On October 31st a New York hospital worker died of inhalation anthrax, becoming the fourth fatality. But investigators could not determine how the woman had been exposed to the bacterium. By mid-November traces of anthrax had been discovered in mail facilities that supplied the CIA. The Senate and House office buildings, the Supreme Court, Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, the White House. Washington, D.C.S. Brentwood Mail Processing and Distribution Center, Washington, D.C.S. Southwest Postal Station. A Kansas City postal facility, the Pentagon's post office, and four more New Jersey postal facilities. Antibiotics were distributed to thousands of workers as a preventive measure. On November 16 an anthrax-laced letter addressed to Senator Patrick Leahy. Vermont, was discovered in a batch of quarantined Capitol Hill mail. The handwriting, all uppercase, was similar to that in the letter addressed to Senator Dashley. And the two letters carried identical messages, September 11th, 01 slash you can not stop us slash we have the anthrax slash you die now slash are you afraid slash slash death to America slash death to Israel slash Allah is great. The letters sent to the senators were postmarked October 9, 2001 in Trenton, New Jersey. The message and handwriting in those letters were also similar to those in letters addressed to the editor of the New York Post and to Tom Brokaw at NBC News, both of which read September 11th, 01 slash this is next slash take penicillin sick now slash death to America slash death to Israel slash Allah is great. The letters sent to the media outlets were postmarked September 18, 2001, also in Trenton, New Jersey. The Franklin Park, New Jersey return address was identical on all four letters. But it was a non-existent location. Investigators believed that whoever sent out the deadly missives was familiar with the area. On November 20 it was confirmed that an elderly Connecticut woman who had died the day before, had been infected with anthrax. The 94-year-old was believed to have been exposed to a letter that had been cross-contaminated in the mail. All five anthrax deaths were caused by the inhalation form of the bacterium. In total, 22 cases of anthrax were identified between October 4 and November 20, 11 of them were the deadly inhalation form. Six people survived, and 11 were the less serious skin form. In all but two cases, the New York hospital worker and the elderly Connecticut woman. The victims were mail handlers or were exposed to work sites that had been contaminated by mail. Investigators concluded that all of the anthrax spores were of the same strain. Called Ames, but that the letters contained different grades of the bacterium. By November 9, 2001, the FBI had issued a behavioral-slash-linguistic assessment of the offender based on the known anthrax parcels. The offender is believed to be an adult male who has access to a source of anthrax and possesses the knowledge and expertise to refine it. The FBI headed a multi-agency effort to identify the perpetrator of the deadly attacks. What were the highlights of the Ming Dynasty?
the focus on Chinese culture that was the hallmark of the Ming Dynasty. 1368-1644, was both its strength and its weakness. After the foreign Mongols, whose dynasty had been established by Kublai Khan in 1260, were overthrown as rulers of China in 1368. The Ming emperors returned their and their subjects' attention to those things that are distinctively Chinese. The focus on Chinese culture produced a flowering in the arts. Evidenced by the name Ming itself, meaning bright or brilliant. Architects working during this period produced the splendor of Beijing's Forbidden City. Ming porcelain, bronze, and lacquerware are coveted collector's items today. Additionally, the novel and drama flourished. And though the Ming rulers promoted this artistic renaissance and reinstated Confucianism and the program of civil service suspended by the Mongols, the ruler's myopia prevented them from seeing the threat of the nomadic Manchu people on the horizon. In 1644 the Manchus invaded from the north and conquered China. Setting up the last dynastic period in Chinese history, it lasted until 1912. Nevertheless, it was the Ming, and not the Manchu, who formed the last great and truly Chinese dynasty. What are England's royal houses? England's royal houses are simply families, including ancestors, descendants, and kin. Since 1066 England's rulers have come from a series of ten royal houses, Normandy, ruled 1066 to 1135, Blois, 1135 to 54, Plantagenet, 1154 to 1399, Lancaster, 1399-1471, York, 1471-85, Tudor, 1485-1603, Stuart, 1603-49, restored 1660-1714, Hanover, 1714-1901, Saxe-Goburg, 1901-10, and Windsor, 1910 to present. Prior to the establishment of the House of Normandy, England had been ruled by Saxons and Danes since. 802 The first king of the House of Normandy was William I, also known as William the Conqueror c. 1028 to 1087, who was the son of the French Duke of Normandy. William invaded England in 1066 on the death of Edward the Confessor and the ascension of Harold II. C. 1022 to 1066. Ousting Harold, William was coronate at Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day. William's grandson, Stephen, was all that consisted of the short lived reign of the House of Blois. Named such since Stephen was the Count of Blois and Chartres. Though he was raised in the court of his uncle, King Henry I, whom he succeeded. The House of Plantagenet, also called the House of Anjou, included the ten year reign. 1189 to 99, of Richard I, or Richard the Lion Hearted. 1157 to 1099, who fought his father. Henry II, 1068 to 1135, 
and his brothers for control of the throne. Richard's military prowess made him the hero of romantic legends. Thereafter, two contending branches of the House of Plantagenet the Houses of Lancaster and York vied for the crown in the infamous War of the Roses, 1455-85. The struggle finally ended when Henry VII, a Lancaster, ascended the throne and married into the House of York. Reuniting the two sides of the family under the newly minted House of Tudor. The Tudors were a famous lot, remembered for the reigns of Henry VIII. 1509-47, and his daughters, Mary I, 1553-1559. And Elizabeth I, 1558 to 1603. The Tudors were followed by the Stuarts, whose reign was interrupted by the establishment of the Commonwealth and Protectorate under Oliver Cromwell, 1599 to 1658. The House was restored to power, giving history the eight-year period known as the Restoration. In 1660, it was King William III, 1650-1702, a steward, and Queen Mary II. 1662-1694, who began in 1689 to rule England in a more modern fashion through Parliament. A steward descendant, George I, 1660-1727, established the House of Hanover, which originated in Germany. Queen Victoria, 1819-1901, who presided over the Victorian age, 1837-1901, was of the House of Hanover. She was succeeded by her son, Edward VII, 1841-1910, who established the House of Saxe-Coburg. Technically, this is the royal house still at the helm today the name was changed to Windsor during World War I, 1914-18. Lead operation in Afghanistan begin? Joined principally by the United Kingdom, the U.S. led military strikes on Afghanistan began on October 7, 2001 to 26 days after the terrorist attacks on the U.S. homeland. The goals were to weaken the Taliban government and root out terrorist cells in the Mideast nation. Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, 1957, the suspected 9-11 mastermind, was also a target. The strikes on Afghanistan, which the United States called Operation Enduring Freedom. OEF, were the first in the new war on terror. OEF's primary goal ousting the ruling Taliban government was achieved relatively quickly. By mid-November, the combined efforts of the U.S. military, British, and Afghanistan's Northern Alliance managed to take control of major cities, including the capital of Kabul. In late December an interim government was established at an unconvened conference in Bonn, Germany. In June 2002 Hamid Karzai, 1957, was overwhelmingly elected as transitional president by the Loya Jirga. The traditional Afghan assembly of ethnic leaders, the transitional government was to run Afghanistan until national elections could be held in 2004.
despite strides in establishing the new government. Fighting continued in the rugged mountainous terrain of eastern Afghanistan, Operation Anaconda was the name given to. The U.S. military's effort to combat Taliban pockets of resistance, root out terrorist cells. And capture key al-Qaeda leaders, including Osama bin Laden, though he had reportedly fled to neighboring Pakistan. Violence also preceded the October 2004 election. Did the Cold War ever get hot? After World War II, 1939-45, an intense rivalry developed between so-called Eastern Bloc countries. Made up of the Communist Soviet Union and its allies. And the Western Bloc countries, the United States and its democratic allies. Though mutual suspicion, distrust and fear ran deep on both sides of the conflict. The Cold War, 1947 to 89 never resulted in fighting it never became hot but both sides nevertheless prepared for that possibility by strengthening military alliances and developing and stockpiling weapons the cuban missile crisis 1962 was probably the closest the cold war came to getting hot When did Operation Iraqi Freedom begin? The U.S.-led multinational military campaign in Iraq began on March 19, 2003, with air strikes on the capital of Baghdad. Ground forces moved into southern Iraq from neighboring Kuwait. After taking the southern city of Basra, U.S. Marines and Army infantry moved northward. Toward the capital, U.S. troops took control of Baghdad on April 9, after which images of gleeful Iraqis. Dismantling statues and other symbols of Saddam Hussein's despotic rule flooded the American media. Coalition forces, American troops, and U.S. backed Kurdish fighters then pressed into northern Iraq. Including Tikrit, Saddam's hometown, and a loyalist stronghold. On April 14, Tikrit fell. The war seemed to be near conclusion. But the hard combat had only begun and continued for years, even after the end of major combat was declared. Why did the United States get involved in Vietnam? The policy of involvement in the Vietnam conflict began in the mid-1950s when President Harry S. Truman, 1884-1972, provided U.S. support to the French in their struggle to retain control of Vietnam, which was then part of French Indochina. In the Cold War era, 1947-89, government leaders believed that the United States must come to the assistance of any country threatened by communism. Truman's successors in the White House, Presidents Dwight D. Eisenhower, 1890-1969, John F. Kennedy, 1917-1963, and Lyndon B. Johnson, 
1908-1973, also followed this school of thought. Fearing a domino effect among neighboring nations if one fell, they'd all fall. What were the killing fields? After communist leader Pol Pot, 1928-1998, head of the Khmer Rouge, took over the Cambodian government in 1975, he ordered a collectivization drive, rounding up anyone who was believed to have been in collusion with or otherwise supported the former regime of Lan Nol, 1913-1985. The government instituted executions, forced labor, in so-called re-education camps. And famine combined to kill one in every five Cambodians, or an estimated two million people, during Pol Pot's reign. He was removed from power in the Vietnamese invasion of 1978-1979, and he died in hiding. In 1998, on December 29 of that year, two former Khmer Rouge leaders surrendered to authorities. Q Sam Phan, age 67, and Nguyen Chia, 71. The two appeared in a televised news conference. Asked if he was sorry for the suffering that claimed the lives of millions of Cambodians. Q Sam Fan looked straight at the questioner and answered in English, Yes, sorry, very sorry. Nguyen Chia, said, We are very sorry. Not just for the human lives but also animal lives that were lost in the war. However, neither Sam Fan nor Chia accepted personal responsibility for the killing fields. While Sam Phan pled not to be tried for his crimes and Prime Minister Hun Sen, 1950. Of Cambodia seemed inclined toward closing the book on this dark chapter in the country's history. There was public outcry to bring the former Khmer leaders to justice. Supporters of a trial assert that Cambodia will have no peace until Someone is punished for the killing fields for the Khmer's genocidal regime. What was the Ottoman Empire? It was a vast Turkish state founded in the 13th century by the Osmani Turks. Turks who were led by descendants of Osmani, 1258 c. 1326, by the middle of the next century, the Ottoman Empire consisted roughly of modern-day Turkey. The terms Turkey and Ottoman Empire are used interchangeably. The empire was expanded further by conquests during the 1400s including the conquest of the Byzantine Empire in 1453. At its height, the Byzantine Empire extended over an area that included the Balkan Peninsula, present-day Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Macedonia, Yugoslavia, Romania, Bulgaria, Albania, Greece, and Turkey, Syria, Egypt. Iraq, the northern coast of Africa, Palestine, and parts of Arabia, Russia, and Hungary. The capital was placed at Constantinople, present-day Istanbul, Turkey. Thus the Turks established a Muslim empire that would remain a formidable force and influence in the region and in Europe for the next three centuries.
During the 1500s and 1600s the Ottoman Empire was the most powerful in the world. It reached its most glorious heights during the reign of Suleiman the Magnificent, 1494-1566. Who ruled from 1520 to 1566, it was he who added parts of Hungary to the Ottoman territory. He also tried to take Vienna, but failed. He did succeed in strengthening the Ottoman navy, which dominated the Mediterranean Sea. Suleiman was not only an expansionist, but a patron of the arts and a builder. He ordered the construction of mosques to spread the Islamic religion throughout the empire, bridges, and other public works. But by the time World War I began in 1914, the Ottoman Empire had been in decline for some 300 years and only consisted of Asia Minor. Parts of southwestern Asia, and part of the Balkan Peninsula. As one of the losing central powers. The Ottoman Empire was dissolved in 1922 by the peace treaties that ended the war. What was the Taliban? It was the ultra-conservative faction that ruled Afghanistan from late 1996 until December 2001. When its government crumbled following a U.S. led military campaign. The Persian word Taliban means students. The group was made up of Afghan refugees who, during the Soviet invasion, 1979-89, had fled their country for Pakistan, where they attended conservative Islamic religious schools. After the Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan and amidst the unrest that ensued, the Taliban rose to prominence. They gained control of the nation region by region, eventually taking the capital of Kabul in 1996. While in power, the group put into force strict laws based on a fundamental interpretation of Islam. The Taliban excluded women from Afghan society. And it allowed the nation to become a training ground for Islamic terror groups such as Al-Qaeda. Very few nations of the world recognized the Taliban government. Its human rights abuses, principally the complete disenfranchisement of women and girls. Were decried by the international community. But the breaking point came after the September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks on the U.S. homeland. When the American government requested that the suspected mastermind of those attacks be extradited from Afghanistan to the United States, the Taliban refused. The group was forcibly ousted in the brief military campaign that followed. In December 2001 the United Nations, UN, convened a conference in Bonn, Germany. Where leaders of anti Taliban ethnic factions decided on a post Taliban transitional government, led by Pashtun leader Hamid Karzai. The Pashtuns are the dominant group in Afghanistan, representing about 42% of the population. The next largest group is the Tajik, which represents about 27% of the population in the highly fragmented nation of 28.5 million people. Attendees also agreed to an unled peacekeeping operation. 
though ethnic rivalries and sporadic conflicts continued under the transitional government. Afghanistan made strides in building a stable, democratic government. One encouraging sign of reform came in March 2005, with the appointment of Habiba Sarabi. The first woman to become a provincial governor in Afghanistan history. Sarabi was chosen by the president for her post, which she assumed in late March. When did the U.S. Were the anthrax attacks acts of terrorism? Yes, as you. As Attorney General John Ashcroft said. When people send anthrax through the mail to hurt people and invoke terror, it's a terrorist act. Investigators believed the attacks, which killed five people and sickened 17 others, were acts of domestic terrorism. But whoever was responsible for mailing anthrax spores in the fall of 2001 remained unknown in mid-2005. Some observers believed the attacks were carried out to expose the nation's vulnerability to bioterrorist attacks. Why did the United States get involved in the Korean War? Americans became involved in the Korean conflict when the United Nations, UN, only five years old, called upon member countries to give military support to South Korea, which had been invaded by troops from communist-ruled North Korea on June 25, 1950. The United Nations considered the invasion to be a violation of international peace and called on the communists to withdraw. When they did not, 16 countries sent troops and some 40 countries sent supplies and military equipment to the aid of the South Korean armies. About 90% of the Union aid came from the United States. But North Korea received aid to the Chinese sent troops and the Soviet Union provided equipment for them to sustain the war, which lasted until July 27, 1953. After three years of fighting, an armistice was called, but a formal peace treaty was never drawn up between the neighboring countries. Prompting the United States to maintain military forces in South Korea in an effort to discourage any further acts of aggression from the North. Why is Henry VIII so famous? The reign of Henry VIII, from 1509 to 1547, is perhaps the most well-known Tudor monarchy. It was marked by papal conflicts and England's subsequent break with the Roman Catholic Church. When Henry's wife, Catherine of Aragon, 1485-1536, failed to produce a male heir, he appealed to the Pope to grant him a divorce. The request was of course denied. Though Henry went on to have his marriage to Catherine declared invalid. On the grounds that she was his brother's widow, and he secretly married Anne Bullen, c. 
1507 to 1536, in 1533, his troubles with the church continued. In 1534 he set up the Church of England, declaring the monarch as its head. He went to extreme measures to ensure the act was upheld even executing his appointed chancellor. Sir Thomas More, 1478-1535, for his refusal to acknowledge royal supremacy. Henry VIII was eventually successful in procuring a male heir to the throne but it required a third marriage, to Jane Seymour, c. 1509-1537 his son, Edward VI, 1537-53, succeeded him in 1547. Nevertheless, it was Henry VIII's daughters who went on to make history. Mary I, who ruled England and Ireland from 1553 to 1558, was the daughter of Henry and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. In 1554 Mary wed Spain's Philip II, 1527 to 1598, forming a temporary alliance between the two powers. The following year she realigned England with the Catholic Church. Undertaking the persecution of Protestants and earning herself the name Bloody Mary. What is Al Qaeda? Al Qaeda, Arabic, meaning the base is a global network of terrorists who banded together during the 1990s and proclaimed to be carrying out a holy war on non-Islamic nations. The group knows no national boundaries, though certain nations, including Afghanistan, were known to be Al-Qaeda strongholds. Led by the elusive Osama bin Laden, 1957, a wealthy exiled Saudi, the group conducted terrorist training programs in several Muslim, mostly Middle Eastern, countries and was funded by loyalists around the world. One of the United States' first actions following the September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon which were later confirmed to have been carried out by Al-Qaeda operatives, was to freeze bank accounts of persons and organizations with suspected ties to the terrorist group. The roots of Al-Qaeda can be traced to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, when thousands of Muslims, including bin Laden, joined the Afghan resistance. The ten-year conflict was a rallying point for Islamic extremists. Bin Laden returned home to Saudi Arabia in 1989, determined to perpetuate a holy war, jihad, by maintaining the funding, organization, and training that had made the Afghan resistance victorious against the Soviets. By the early 1990s he emerged as a leader in the Muslim world, proclaiming his goal to reinstate the Caliphate, a unified Muslim state. He also proclaimed the United States to be an enemy to Islam. He considered the nation responsible for all conflicts involving Muslims. The Saudi government rescinded his passport in 1994, and bin Laden fled his homeland. He eventually found safe harbor in Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. According to the report issued by the 9-11 Commission, bin Laden's declaration of war came in February 1998. 
when he and fugitive Egyptian physician Ayman al. Zawahiri arranged from their Afghanistan headquarters for an Arabic newspaper in London. To publish what they termed a fatwa issued in the name of a world Islamic front. The statement claimed that America had declared war against God and his messenger. And they called for retaliation. Under bin Laden's direction, Al-Qaeda carried out several attacks on American targets. Including the August 7, 1998, bombings of U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, which killed 258 and injured 5,000, and the September 11, 2001, attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon, which killed nearly 3,000 people. After the Global Coalition Against Terrorism, led by U.S. forces, launched its attack on Afghanistan in October 2001, bin Laden was believed to have fled for Pakistan. Capturing him and other Al-Qaeda leaders and operatives was the key objective of the United States in its efforts to dismantle the terrorist network. When was Saddam Hussein captured? The former Iraqi leader, known for his cruelty, was caught on December 14, 2003, eight months after the fall of Baghdad. Hussein, 1937, was found in Ad-Dur, about nine miles from his hometown of Tikrit. He was said to be hiding like a rat, in a hole across the Tigris River from one of his palaces. His six to eight foot bunker was equipped with a basic ventilation system and was camouflaged with bricks and dirt. A disheveled Hussein had in his possession about $750,000 as well as arms, which he did not use. The former dictator was taken into custody in what U.S. defense. Secretary Donald Rumsfeld called a surprisingly peaceful manner. Despite that, Hussein reportedly remained defiant and unrepentant, when he was asked about the thousands of people killed and dumped into mass graves during his regime, he dismissed his victims as thieves. The news of his capture prompted jubilation in Baghdad and across the nation. Crowds of Iraqis flooded into the streets to celebrate the end of his brutal rule. But his hometown of Tikrit, considered a loyalist stronghold, remained quiet. The news of his capture was welcomed by leaders around the globe. In a short televised address from the White House, President Bush remarked that Hussein would face the justice he denied to millions. Bush also reassured the Iraqi people that they would not have to fear the rule of Saddam Hussein ever again. Hussein was held for questioning in Iraq. Upon the June 28, 2004, transfer of authority, Iraq was given legal custody of the former ruler, who became a criminal defendant instead of a prisoner of war. Why is Charlemagne so well known?
Charlemagne's popularity with history students is due not only to the ruler's great accomplishments during his lifetime, but also to the fact that these accomplishments were documented, his biography. Titled Vita Caroli Magna, The Life of Charlemagne, was written by a fellow named Einhard, c. 770-840, who was his advisor. Charlemagne, 742-814, or Charles the Great became king of the Western Franks when his father, Pepin the Short, c. 714-768, died in 768, upon the death of his brother. Carloman, in 771, Charles became king of all the Franks. He then went on to conquer much of Western Europe, including Saxony, Lombardy, northeastern Spain, and Bavaria. He sometimes employed brutal tactics in bringing people and regions under control. During the last two decades of the 8th century, he used mass executions to subdue Saxon rebellions. Charlemagne succeeded in uniting all of these areas under one empire and on Christmas Day 800, he had Pope Leo III, c. 750-816, crown him Emperor of the West, thus initiating the Holy Roman Empire. As a patron of the arts, literature, and science, Charlemagne revived Western Europe, which had been in decline since the fall of the West Roman Empire, in 476. He is credited with laying the foundation for the Holy Roman Empire and the European civilization that developed later in the Middle Ages. He ruled until his death in 814. What was the impact of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan? When the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in December 1979 to bolster a pro-communist government in the Middle Eastern nation, no one could have anticipated the far-reaching effects effects that would be felt decades later and around the globe. What immediately followed was a 10-year civil war, in which Soviet troops fought Afghan guerrillas, or the Mujahideen. The war in Afghanistan became a jihad, or holy war, and a rallying point for many Muslims. With the conflict drawing young men from across the Muslim world to fight on the side of the guerrillas. According to the 9 11 Commission report, mosques, schools, and boarding houses served as recruiting stations in many parts of the world, including the United States. The war was a virtual stalemate for seven years. But a turning point came in 1986 after the United States and Great Britain supplied shoulder fired surface to air missiles to the Afghan guerrillas. The weaponry gave the scrubby ground forces a fighting chance against Soviet air power. As the 9 11 Commission report asserts, together with Saudi Arabia, the United States supplied billions of dollars worth of secret assistance to rebel Afghan groups resisting the Soviet occupation. Thus supported, in April 1988 the Afghans declared victory. And early the next year the Soviet troops began to withdraw. 
The war was over, but it had fueled an extremist Islamic ideology, the jihad as holy war. And put into place an infrastructure out of which emerged a powerful and deadly terrorist network. Though most Muslims hold peaceful views, a minority of Muslims view any non Muslims as unbelievers. It was from this minority, trained and financed as a result of the Afghan war, that the global network of terrorists called Al Qaeda emerged. What was the Cuban Missile Crisis? The 1962 events, which happened very quickly, nevertheless constituted a major confrontation of the Cold War, 1947-89. After the disastrous Bay of Pigs invasion, when the United States backed Cuban expatriates in an attempt to oust Fidel Castro. 1926, the Soviet Union quietly began building missile sites in Cuba. Since the island nation is situated just south of Florida, when U.S. reconnaissance flights detected the Soviet military construction projects there, it was an alarming discovery. On October 22, 1962, President John F. Kennedy, 1917-1963, demanded that the Soviet Union withdraw its missiles from Cuba. Kennedy also ordered a naval blockade of the island. Six days later, the Soviets agreed to dismantle the sites, ending the crisis. What was the arms race? The arms race refers to the buildup of nuclear weapons by the Soviet Union and the United States during the Cold War. The race began on August 29, 1949, when the Soviet Union tested an atomic bomb. Prior to this, only the United States had the knowledge to build the atomic bomb. What was the Carolingian Empire? The empire, which united most of Western Europe under a single leader from about 734 until 987, was named for the Carolingians, a family of Frankish kings. After the decline of the Roman Empire, in 476, various Germanic tribes, including the Goths, the Vandals, the Franks, and the Anglo-Saxons, dominated Western Europe fighting each other as well as the advancing Muslims to protect and expand their territories. In 719 Charles Martel C 688 to 741, united the lands of all the Franks under his rule. The Franks were the descendants of Germanic tribes, who settled in the Rhine River region of Western Europe. He then went on to protect France from Arab incursion and campaigned against the Burgundians and the Frisians eventually bringing them under his control. Upon his death in 741, Charles Martel was succeeded by his son, Pepin III. Known better perhaps as Pepin the Short, 
c714 to 768. It was Pepin who established the Carolingian Empire and brought the Lombards into the empire. Upon his death, he was succeeded by his son Charlemagne, or Charles the Great, 742 to 814. Who were the Khmer Rouge? The Khmer Rouge, or Red Khmer, were a group of Cambodian communists led by radical Marxist leader Pol Pot, 1925-1998. Between 1970 and 1975 the Khmer Rouge guerrilla force, supported by communists from neighboring Vietnam, waged a war to topple the U.S. supported government of Lan Nol, 1913-1985. On April 16, 1975, Lan Nol's regime fell. And the next day the Khmer Rouge seized the Cambodian capital, Phnom Penh. The ruthless revolutionary leader Pol Pot became prime minister of a communist Cambodia and instituted a reign of terror. In his attempt to turn Cambodia into an agriculture-based society, the Khmer Rouge systematically emptied the cities forcibly moving the people onto collective farms where they performed hard labor. Anyone thought to be opposed to the Khmer Rouge was killed. An estimated 2 million people died by execution, overwork, and starvation. Pol Pot's experiment had failed. And his efforts to revolutionize Cambodia amounted to nothing short of genocide. A Vietnamese invasion ousted the Khmer Rouge in 1979 and installed a new leadership. But civil wars were fought throughout the 1980s. The warring factions, who had made various alliances among themselves, finally signed a peace treaty in 1991. Under the watchful eye of the United Nations, Elections were held in 1993. The resulting constitution provided for a democratic government with a limited monarchy. At that point, the Cambodian leadership seemed to come full circle with Noradum Sihanouk. 1922, being crowned king in 1993, in 1970 Sihanouk had been deposed by Lan Nol whose regime later became the target of the Khmer Rouge. During his lifetime Sihanouk made strides in establishing Cambodia's independence. And he enjoyed great public support. Due to failing health, he abdicated the throne in November 2004 and was succeeded by his son. Noradum Sihamani 1953. For decades after Pol Pot was deposed, he continued to lead a revolutionary force of the Khmer in Cambodia. Though he remained out of public view, his own men turned against him in early 1998, and Pol Pot died in April of that year. In December the last main fighting force of the Khmer Rouge surrendered to the Cambodian government. The event was broadcast on national television. Though some Khmer leaders remained in hiding and small bands of guerrilla. Fighters were thought to still exist, the radical Marxist group. Which had terrorized Cambodia no longer presented a threat to the government.
What was the My Lai Massacre? It was a horrific chapter in American military history, during which you S. Troops fighting in South Vietnam took the small village of My Lai on March 16, 1968. The incident did not come to light until more than a year later, after which time it became clear that the unit of 105 soldiers who entered My Lai that morning had faced no opposition from the villagers. Even so, at the end of the day as many as 500 civilians, including women and children, lay dead. Though charges were brought against some of the men, only the commander of the company. Lieutenant William Calley, was convicted. His sentence of life imprisonment for the murder of at least 22 people was later reduced to 20 years, and he was released on full parole in November 1974. Why were Tsars Peter and Catherine known as the Great? The epithet the Great can be misleading, while Romanov Tsars Peter the Great, who ruled from 1682 to 1725, and Catherine the Great, who ruled from 1762 to 1796, are among the best known of the Romanov dynasty and both had many accomplishments during their reigns. They are also known for having increased their power at the expense of others. Peter is recognized for introducing Western European civilization to Russia and for elevating Russia to the status of a great European power. But he also relied on the serfs, the peasants who were little more than indentured servants to the lords. Not only to provide the bulk of the funding he needed to fight almost continuous wars, but for the manpower as well, most soldiers were serfs. The men responsible for establishing schools, including the Academy of Sciences, reforming the calendar, and simplifying the alphabet also carried out ruthless reforms. Peter's most vainglorious act was, perhaps, to move the capital from Moscow to the city he had built for himself on the swampy land ceded by Sweden, St. Petersburg, known as Petrograd 1914-24, as Leningrad 1924-91. As his window on Europe, Peter succeeded in making the city into a brilliant cultural center. For her part, Catherine the Great may well be acknowledged as a patron of the arts and literature. One who corresponded with the likes of French writer Voltaire, 1694-1778, but she, to increase the privileges of the nobility while making the lives of the serfs even more miserable. Her true colors were shown by how she ascended to power in the first place. In 1744 she married Peter, III, who became Tsar of Russia in 1762. That same year. Catherine conspired with her husband's enemies to depose him. He was later killed. And so Catherine came to power, proclaiming herself Tsarina. She began her reign by attempting reforms, but a peasant uprising, 1773-74, and the French Revolution which began in 1789, 
prompted her only to strengthen and protect her absolute authority. Like Peter the Great, she, too, extended the frontiers of the empire through a series of conquests. By the end of her reign, in 1796, Catherine had reduced even the free peasants to the level of serfdom. What caused the Vietnam War? In the simplest terms, the long conflict in Southeast Asia was fought over. The unification of communist North Vietnam and non-communist South Vietnam. The two countries had been set up in 1954. Prior to that, all of Vietnam was part of the French colony of Indochina. But in 1946, the Vietnamese fought the French for control of their own country. The United States provided financial support to France. But the French were ultimately defeated in 1954. Once France had withdrawn its troops, an international conference was convened in Geneva to decide what should be done with Vietnam. The country was divided into two partitions, along the 17th parallel. This division of land was not intended to be permanent. But the elections that were supposed to reunite the partitions were never held. Vietnamese President Ho Chi Minh 1892-1969, took power in the north while Emperor Bao Dai, 1913-1997, for a while, ruled the south. But the communist government in the north opposed the non-communist government of South Vietnam and believed the country should still be united. The North Vietnamese supported anti-government groups in the South and over time. Stepped up aid to those groups. These communist trained South Vietnamese were known as the Viet Cong. Between 1957 and 1965, the Viet Cong struggled against the South Vietnamese government. But in the mid-1960s, North Vietnam initiated a large-scale troop infiltration into South Vietnam. And the fighting became a full-fledged war. China and the Soviet Union provided the North Vietnamese with military equipment, but not manpower. The United States provided both equipment and troops to non-communist. South Vietnam in its struggle against the Viet Cong and North Vietnam. By 1969 there were more than half a million American troops in South Vietnam. This policy was controversial back in America, where protests to involvement in the Vietnam War continued until the last U.S. troops were brought home in 1973. In January of that year, the two sides had agreed to a ceasefire, but the fighting broke out again after the American ground troops left. On April 30, 1975, South Vietnam surrendered to North Vietnam and the war, which had lasted nearly two decades, ended. North Vietnam unified the countries as the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. For its part, the North Vietnamese called the conflict a war of national liberation. They viewed the long struggle as an extension of the earlier struggle with France. They also perceived the war to be another attempt by a foreign power. This time the United States, 
to rule Vietnam. Why were Spain's King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella so powerful? The 1469 marriage of Ferdinand, 1452-1516, and Isabella. 1451-1504, brought previously separate Spanish kingdoms, Aragon and Castile, under their joint control. Together the monarchs went on to rule Spain and expand their realm of influence until Isabella's death in 1504. Ferdinand ruled without his wife thereafter. Theirs was a reign that seemed to have religion on its side, in 1496 Pope Alexander VI conferred. Upon each of them the title Catholic, as in, Ferdinand the Catholic and Isabella the Catholic. And for good reason, because the kings and queens most. Well-known acts seem to have been motivated by their beliefs. It was Ferdinand and Isabella who in 1478 established the infamous Spanish Inquisition. A court that imprisoned or killed Catholics who were suspected of not following religious teachings. While the Inquisition was aimed at discovering and punishing Muslims and Jews who had converted to Catholicism but who were thought to be insincere, soon all Spaniards came to fear its power. In 1482 the monarchs undertook a war with the Muslim Moors, conquering the last Moorish stronghold at Granada in 1492 and forcing them back to Africa after four centuries of occupation and influence in the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal. The recovery of Iberia had been motivated by religion, when the king and queen expelled the Moors. They also believed they were expelling Islam from their kingdom. That year, 1492, was a fateful one for the Spanish, not only were the Moors driven out, but Ferdinand and Isabella also turned their attention to the Jewish threat, expelling them, too. Those who remained went underground with their faith, those Iberian Jews who migrated spread their division of Judaism. Called Sephardim, to North Africa and the Middle East. Most students of history know 1492 best as the year that explorer Christopher Columbus, 1451-1506, sailed to the New World. It was Ferdinand and Isabella who sponsored his voyage, believing that the conquered lands would not only add to their authority but would provide new territory for the spread of Catholicism. The Spaniards soon emerged as a formidable sea power in the Atlantic. For all their fervor, Isabella and Ferdinand were also interested in education and the arts. And they sponsored advances in both areas during their reign. Their legacy included their grandson Charles V, 1500 to 1558, who, through marriage, became Holy Roman Emperor and ruled from 1519 to 1558 as one of the all-powerful Habsburgs. <laughs>